interested in, you know, like being a staff adjuster. Um, but when catastrophes happen, like big events, you know, like big hailstorms that like came through Minnesota in the month of May, where there was thousands and thousands of claims filed in a short period of time, there's not enough staff adjusters to handle all those claims in a timely manner. Same things happen when hurricanes happen. You know, thousands of people are affected. Um, and independent adjusters are on the rosters of independent well, adjusting firms. And there's a bunch of them, like Renfro, Crawford, uh, Pilot's one of the big ones, um, Eberl, uh, CMMS. I'm on the rosters of all these and a few others. And when big events happen, they don't have enough adjusters because, like, an adjuster is a person that comes out there, inspects, takes pictures, and puts the estimate together, for, you know, the repair cost. Cuts a check, you know, and then the, uh, then, you know, contractors and roofers and all that, you know, go to work. So after you left uh, trucking the first time, you, 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 you pretty much went went back into the insurance game? Well, the majority of it was preparing myself for what you're calling the insurance game, but it's to get trained, qualified, certified, and knowledgeable on how to do that stuff. Because, brother, ain't nobody born an adjuster. Let me tell you, it is one of the hardest things I've ever ventured out into because there's so much and it's so regulated. And these insurance companies in their file, you know, I'm tapping it. Like if I leave a file note in a file, it can't ever be deleted. It's a part of the file. And, you know, it's, you know, it can be read in court. You know, if there's any kind of lawsuit that happens, you know, against the insurance company uh, over the claim and everything. So it's a big freaking deal. And then like the, I've only done two deployments so far. One, they mailed me a couple of computers, and I was on the Auto Express team. It was for State Farm um, that I did from home, and I didn't particularly like that. The second one was up in Minnesota, and that's where actually really what I'd been training for is to do property. And a big part of it is climbing on roofs, lockout, man, um, inspecting the roof for hail damage. Yeah. Or wind damage, you know, shingles blown off and everything. So there's ladders involved. You got to climb up on that freaking roof. And some roofs are like two-story or more and are like really freaking steep. And to do those, you have to have, well, you need to have rope and harness gear, which is a big pain in the ass, but, you know, prevents you from falling and breaking your neck or whatever off the roof. And I got certified for rope and harness. And that's really what got me in on that minnesota deployment but it's great money dude it's 44 dollars an hour and you work constantly it's 12 hours a day every day 84 hours a week i would imagine that is good money you climbing up you pretty much putting your well, life I on 19, and i was yeah i was paid nineteen thousand dollars you know for my 33 days i was in minnesota and I didn't even really know what I was doing when I got there. I started figuring it out uh, as I was there. Now, let me ask you a quick question <laughs> about about roofs for a second, because a lot of a lot of insurance okay. a lot of insurance companies are funny when it comes to people making claims on their roofs. Like, for example, like there was a roof that there was a roof that was like that was like damaged, it start, you know, shingles start coming off and all like that. And a friend of mine put in a claim for it. But when they came out there to uh, you know, to look at the, you know, the the you know, to do the claim, they said that that the insurance refused the claim because it was sun damaged or like like over over time damaged or something like that. What 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 is that like? Yeah. What, what type of damage that that a roof needs to be claimed to be paid out to be repaired? To happen because of an unexpected event, like an accidental sudden damage, is what the insurance covers. What ain't covered is your old war ass out old 30 year roof that you've never done any kind of maintenance or anything to, and it's all rotten. That ain't covered because, you know, that's wear and tear and the normal life cycle of things. And a homeowner's policy isn't just, you know, a renewal policy to, you know, keep things fresh. It's what would if, like when I was out there and 
Uh, like identifying hail is tricky, man. Like you, you see, oh, there's a, a messed up spot on the roof, you know, where, you know, they're, you know, it's kind of round or whatever. And you can kind of see the felt part, you know, under it. But what I was there to inspect is damage that occurred on May the 30th because of this storm that came through from the southeast that had, you know, 50 plus mile an hour winds. And there was two and a half inch, you know, max hail size reported on that particular day. Not maybe hail that might have occurred two years ago when another little storm came through and damaged and that wasn't repaired. And you can kind of tell because the sun will bake it and it'll be faded and, you know, there'll be little fibers that develop, you know, over the course of time versus a fresh, you know, kind of hail hit where, you know, you see the crushed granulars and, and it fits the size, you know, the, the size. And also, you know, the ground inspection, like, siding and fascia and gutters and things like that will, you know, have little hail hits on them, which are indicators there was the indeed, you know, hail with some wind behind it, you know, that damaged the roof. And then there's, you know, metal roofs. You know, most are laminate shingles, but, you know, a lot of, some older ones have the three pad shingles, but that's what it's about is what occurred on that day. Like my first, well, actually my second claim I ever ran that I had a, a trainer that went with me on this. And this got determined on, on the phone call that there were some storms that came through between the 8th and the 12th. And State Farm decided just to group them all together as one storm day. But then another one with tornadoes and stuff came through May the 30th. Well, that was a separate event that had more wind in it. and. This guy had a limb on the, the second one that hit it, but it, it was two different claims, two different deductibles and everything. He was so unhappy with, you know, how things turned out. I had a few that turned out unhappy. Another one was a boat dock. Get this, with insurance companies, it covers wind. Like wind and hail is a covered peril is what it's called. But what's not is wave action, like the lake being all choppy and everything. That's not a, you know, that's an exclusion in, in the homeowner's policy. And I had to turn down a claim for this guy's boat dock, but I looked everywhere. I couldn't find any evidence of wind damage anywhere on there that damaged his dock, which by the time I got there was like three and a half weeks later. He you know, you know, took it apart and, and really didn't have good, good pictures and everything, but yeah, so uh, for all you homeowners out there, get familiar with your home. Can I take your order? Can I get a tall chai? A uh, large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti. Yeah, the biggest one you got. A venti is large. No, venti is 20. Homeowners pause. <laughs> that's what's up. That's 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 a good advice right there. So let's fast forward up until now. You uh, <laughs> you decided to come back to the uh, come back to where it all began. Uh, back into the truck. Uh, did you go back to GMP where where you started at because you had a good relationship with them and everything? Did you go back to GMP or is this something different now? You know that's a really really good question. Uh, but GMP don't exist anymore. They got bought out by NFI. So no, I did. And NFI is why why you know I left. It was just a little too big, a little corporate, too corporate, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all anymore. So, no, I didn't even consider going back to them. I'm driving with a smaller company. Well, they're part of the Paladin Group, um, which is a Furman graduate. That's in upstate South Carolina. That's one of the billionaire kind of guys. has a, a lot of different companies. But the one I'm with is Quickway, which is a 100% employee-owned trucking company. And I'm out of uh, their Terminal 30, which is in Simpsonville. And I got a T680, that, um, a white one. That's fine. My, my inverter is on the driver's seat, which is a little retarded and not ideal. It should be you know, up against the bunk so you can run your wires correctly and everything. So I still got a little housekeeping you know, to get in. Uh, but my trucking thing, it's going to be temporary. The reason I chose this company is I can drive with them and you know make between 63 and 73 cents a mile, depending upon how my week turns out. Um, and... They've got, you know, the employee-owned stock option thing. There's extra money that goes into retirement for you each year that's based upon the profit that the company makes for the year. So I kind of like that. Um, and I can drive for these 
I'm probably going to be driving in the truck for the next maybe four or five weeks. But as you know, the storm season, you know, comes around, I need to build my money up and pay some credit cards off because I was really close to broke, man. Um, even though I made nineteen grand in the, in, in the month of June, but they taxed the shit out of me. I only like netted like eleven thousand. They took so much taxes out of it and everything. And then I, you know, I had to. Well, you know, truck and wheel, and that's what I'm using it for. But it, it, it's not as good as adjust. The adjusting thing is a hidden. Like I, I'll make more content because I'm going to change my life, you know, with it. I, and I'm going to be taking a week off and going to Vegas in January. There's a big adjuster convention out in Vegas. And I'm going to do that. I'm just going to kind of play it by ear. I'm on the roster, probably like seven, eight, seven or eight different adjusting firms. I've already got my Xactimate Level Two certification, which that's a computer system to put estimates and 3D models and you know, uh, and sketch you know houses, roofs, that kind of stuff with. Uh, so I'm confident. Uh, on that and i got my rope and harness certification state farm certifications all state certifications and um oh you know other stuff and you know i've, I've been on deployment so it ain't all new like it was the first time which was really overwhelming the first week because it was a lot being thrown at me and you don't really have anybody there holding your hand but you do have resources you can reach out to and do screen shares with so you know there's there's systems in place to help you and i've made some adjuster friends now that I can call and things, but I'll be going back to that. But there's a good chance I'll truck a little bit, adjust a little bit, truck a little bit, you know, just depending upon how the whole storm thing goes. Um, but I, I did my med card, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. I was way in between it, but I, but I decided to go get my med card. And ironically enough, two weeks later, I'm waking up in a truck. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I did my. So, my DOT physical, you so, know, because it was getting ready to run out if I didn't do it. So it's back to being trucker gym for a minute. You uh, are you going to? I guess so. Man. You 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 going to uh, chronicle this on uh, on uh, on the YouTube? How 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 is uh, how is you going to you know chronicle your YouTube because on your YouTube you know of course you know trucker gym you had the nice edited. Uh, presentation. I, I really love the way how you you brought everything together as far as telling your story on uh, on YouTube and everything. And me and you both know how 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 tedious it is to edit everything down and 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 upload and all like that. But it how, is, brother. It is. How 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 are you going to do? How are you going to do this now with uh, with with trucking? Are you gonna are you gonna do a little bit more? Are you gonna do a do some more uh trucking videos now or are you just gonna do your journey as a uh as an adjuster how are you gonna how are you gonna operate your youtube because I, I this video i saw is on is on facebook i'm not even sure if you put that up on your youtube because i didn't get no notification no nah, that you're right that was on facebook because you know there's a boom quick go live you know not too much of a time commitment doing that but I'm, I'm gonna make some videos dude it, it's not gonna be my top priority my purpose and you know uh, everything i'm about but um uh, like for instance i'm charging my drone batteries right now i'm in a cool little epic spot for, you know on the interstate there's some water and everything nearby right before you get 81 off 40. And i'm gonna video that and then i'll probably break out my dlsr and say a little something show beamer and well i'm gonna end up in florida you know this weekend and I've got a. I'll have a little time that I can do edit because I'm not going to be running like crazy. I'm going to have, you know, some breaks that are. I might even end up getting a reset in. I think I may can get to Florida Saturday night. I can't deliver it till Monday morning. But I'm going to do a few here and there, and then what I want to do, I, I need a partner, like somebody with me besides just me all by myself you know sometimes a cameraman and everything for the the projects that i want to do especially in the camper you know when i'm working storms and and all that i think it'll be interesting but in the meantime i'll just do what i do throw a little live one up you know occasionally to you know interact with my peeps and but you know i, I ain't gonna kill myself like i used to and try to you know 
be on some upload schedule where I'm putting like three a week up and everything. I'm not, I don't know how I did it, man. I, I really don't. Like, I think about doing it now when I see all the steps that it would require, and I'm like, I'm not willing to do all that. Right yeah. Now. I gotta <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, yeah. What do you think now? You, you know, uh, a lot of YouTubers had had left the platform. I mean, a uh, couple of, you know, I ain't going to say. Couple, to like, I, I ain't go, yeah, I ain't going to say top YouTubers. I mean, some of the top YouTubers are still there. But some of the mid-level trucking YouTubers uh, that was, you know, that was heavy on YouTube, they they left YouTube for for quicker pastures on TikTok now. What do you, what do you think about uh, what do you think about that? And have you uh, decided to do some TikTok content? That's probably the smarter way to go. Um, I mean, that's what's trending. That's what's popular. That's what's being promoted everywhere you turn. And but no, nah, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. Um, uh, but like once again, lockout man, being a big celebrity on on video and actually even making money off all the ad sense and you know sponsors and all that has never really been anything I've gave two fucks about. Sorry to drop an F-bomb. But that's never put me and drove me at all. Like, it like it gives me anxiety thinking about it because, I don't know, I feel like I'd lose my authenticity going that route. And, you know, promoting, anybody, you know, promoting anybody's product that would fucking pay me, you know? Uh, no matter how trashy or, you know, from China and, like, I don't know, detrimentally could be to people. If they're paying me, you know, I'll talk about it. You know, I, I'm just not that guy. Um, money has never been a huge motivator for me because I'm a money magnet. Money comes easily and frequently to me anyway. I, you know, I, I, you know, it being my main, I don't know, every, it, it's not. You know, that was one thing I about you. Enough. I never went on that that was one thing about you that I that I really liked and gravitated to. You you never uh considered your YouTube like as a business. I mean, you kind of like like myself considered it as a hobby. You know what I'm saying? You never worried about well, how many subscribers I, well, you had. I didn't so you, much you just consider did. It, well, maybe a hobby. I considered it practice to get better. Because my long-term goal is I want to make feature films. I've got five brilliant, they're not full-fledged stories. They're floating around in my head. I mean, I'm driving, you know, there's notes on my computer files and things about each one of them. But, ooh, what was that sound? Um, but that's what I want to do. And the whole making YouTube and videos thing is practice that you know getting better with the camera going to manual settings understand shutter speed and you know fluid of telling a story and you know all that stuff I, i've always just look at it as practice for that and if some people dig it you know that, that's even better you know uh, i like what... when people tell me they enjoy what i produce now you know all the trolls that want to tell you everything you said wrong and everything um you know i try not to pay too much attention to that, but sometimes they're right. No, nah, I, I I honestly don't think that you had that many that that many trolls. I mean, because your your YouTube was well, my was channel was big. Work. Like right. when you have a small channel, everybody tells you how good you are. Now you get up over ten thousand, twenty thousand views. You know, you're going to have a percentage of the other because uh, you're drawing more attention to yourself. But on you know, like being a big fish in a small pond. Well, all right, Trucker Jim, back in the truck, man. Thank you very much, man. I, it's it's always always a pleasure, you know, getting you on and and chopping it up, man. Because you know, me and you, we we started just about you know just about the same time. We started at the same company, you know. We kind of cross yeah. paths with each other and everything. So where so are you I, with now? Uh, well, right now myself, I'm at a small outfit in Ohio, man. You know, I uh. Okay. I, 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 it's, it's, it'll be about two years that uh that I will be with this outfit. Um, so I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying what I'm doing. The owner operator is very very 
very strict about about his business but you know it's something that i had to adapt to and he's paying me good so you know i, I don't have no complaints well right on yeah i think these guys i'm with now are gone you know I, i've always been kind of attracted to the small smaller outfits where i can talk to a person and you know all that corporate stuff you need to talk to somebody else and let me email them and all that it just makes my dick go up, man. I'm like, this ain't what I want to do. All right, before we get on up out of here, would you suggest NFI as a as a company to as a company to go with for you know for for new drivers that's interested in coming into the trucking industry? Sure, man. If the situation lines up for what you want and where you're at and everything, they got a lot of good uh, like dedicated account this grocery store kind of like stuff where you know you're home every day just where i call home right now it don't work you know i'm out in the middle of no fucking where in Abbeville county you know i'm an hour from an interstate and everything so it's just not now i could pack my camper up and go anywhere in the country and i reserve the right one day i may do that but you know like right here recently i've just been staying on my family land spending time with my mom as much as i can she uh she's turning uh sixty eight years old. Oh uh, my, my, mom, my, my mom my mom my mom should be my uh, mom should be seventy next uh what's next month? Uh not September, but she'll be seventy in October, God willing. And and you know, I I I'm happy with the fact that sometimes anyway, I slow down and take a minute to appreciate the things that are in my life and not take them for granted. And, you know, so all like I tell you a good example of pushing things off, thinking they're always going to be there and you can do them anytime and not live your life with a sense of urgency is the Georgia Guidestones got blown the fuck up, man. And now they don't exist anymore. I don't know if you know what the Georgia Guidestones is. They're outside of Elberton, Georgia. They're kind of like the American stone hands. There's some mystery about it. But some people say it's something about the devil and it's all evil and everything. And I always wanted to go out there. It's it's only like an hour and 20, not even an hour and 20 minutes, maybe not even an hour from my mom's house across the Georgia line. But I, but I, you know, I never went. For, for whatever reason. And I talked about it never time. But I can't now because they don't exist anymore. And I missed my opportunity because I wasn't living with a sense of urgency. And um, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I went, when I see my mom and everything, I'm taking a moment and having just precious moments with her, you know, sitting down and, you know, having breakfast and things. And, um, yeah, that's, um, because one day she won't, you know, she won't be here. Or maybe one day, you know, I might check out for her. You know, you never know these kind of things. But, you know, when you have a chance to spend time, you know, good time, quality time with the people that matter in your life, I mean, that's precious, man, on, on both sides. Precious for them, too. My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. B e a m e r Beamer. Yeah, Beamer. I'm sure we're gonna see some uh, some shots of Beamer in your in 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 your new YouTube videos when they come out, right? Balls and frisbees and stuff. He's an athletic, smiling dog. All right. Check the seal, but yeah, you'll, you'll you'll see him in my next video. That definitely will be, uh, maybe Sunday or Monday. All right, definitely, and rest in but peace. But it's on the Trucker GM channel. I, yeah, I changed the name temporarily, but it's back to Trucker GM. <laughs> Basically, man, and shout out and rest in peace to your to your old sidekick, Boone. Man, I you know I I I, I, I seen uh I I went back uh when I saw the video on Facebook I I went back to your channel and some of your old videos with a uh, little Boone on there, man. It it was. You know, it was it was some, it was some you awesome. You ever seen the time. little tribute video I made for him? I sure did. That was an awesome okay. video, bro. All right, my guy, you take it easy, stay safe, man, and uh, let's get back together uh, a little bit later on.